Wednesday is a Trinity Sunday. We'll be here again in Mary's and this is the master that the epistle for this uh, Trinity Sunday is taken first, also the first Sunday after Pentecost. This is always suppressed by this feast of the Holy Trinity. And the epistle for this Trinity Sunday is taken by that is St. Paul of the Romans, chapter 11. Oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and of the knowledge of God. So in harmonies of glory, his way, his judgments, now unsearchable his ways. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him that recompense shall be made unto him? For of him and by him and in him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Amen. It's taken according to St. Matthew, chapter 28. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, All power is given to me in heaven and on earth. Going therefore, teach ye all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And behold, and with you all days, even unto the consummation of the world. Those are the words of today. Amen. Today, the sacred feast of the Holy Trinity. And, of course, every day is the day of the Trinity. But it's interesting in our times, if you consider a little catechism, a catechism that's very important concerning the necessity of the knowledge of the Trinity for salvation. There came a teaching on invincible ignorance about 150 years ago. And the invincible ignorance teaching was used by the modernists as a tool to, to, to take away our Catholic faith to those who have been educated in seminaries, and to the new priests, and that to the Catholics. And well, we know that the sacred scripture tells us that if you are invincibly ignorant, invincible ignorance means that, an ignorance that you cannot overcome by a reasonable means. So if you, for instance, are a road runner, and you are driving down the road, running down the road after a coyote, and he runs through a tunnel, and you see a painted a tunnel, and you run and find out that someone painted a uh, tunnel uh, on, a, on a piece of con on a piece of stone. You ran smack dab into a tunnel and fell off and, and smashed your face. You were invisibly ignorant of the fact that that was a painting of a tunnel, and it was not a real tunnel. You said you were driving down the road, you saw a tunnel, and you smashed into the tunnel. So that so they said, what happens if someone's driving down the road? And you decide that there is a brick wall, and you decide to drive the brick wall. That's called suicide. But if you are driving down the road, and there is a painted tunnel on that, on that brick wall, and you drive into it, that's not suicide. That is an accident. And that you're not guilty for trying to commit suicide. Therefore, you, when you go before the judgment seat of God, God will say to you, why is your face flat? Well, because I was driving down the road at 80 miles an hour, and I ran into a tunnel. And it says, you know, you're not. I ran into a brick wall, ran into a, a stone wall. It says, well, you know, that was that's called, uh, you know, suicide. So you're going straight to hell. No, God isn't going to do that. He's going to see that you didn't know that it was a tunnel, and it wasn't your fault. You didn't know that it, it was. You didn't know it was not a tunnel, and there was a painting. There's a, 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 a very talented road runner had painted this uh, tunnel on the side of this wall, and you thought that it was a, a tunnel. So when you ran into it, you, you died by running into a, a concrete wall, but in fact, you were not, uh, you, you, you didn't commit suicide. Therefore, you will not be punished for committing suicide. So the church teaches that those who do evil acts, or those who make mistakes, will never be punished for anything they do in invincible ignorance. And St. Thomas Aquinas pointed out that the modernists, the modernists are heretics, and one of the things the modernists do is they take every single Catholic doctrine and they shrink wrap it. They make it, they make it so precise that it somehow turns into an error or a heresy. So they say, for instance, well, since so this is what the modernists did with that doctrine. Anyone who does an act without knowing it will not be punished for that act. And so, for instance, if a, if a pygmy in Africa or a Hindu in India or a anyone in the world. If they do not know that the Catholic religion is the true religion, it's not their fault. And they, they don't understand, no one told them. They're not aware of the 
seven sacraments, etc., then they will not be punished for their ignorance. They will not be punished for their ignorance. They will not go. They will not be punished for denying the the, uh, the blessed Trinity. They will not be punished for denying the four ne the necessary truths of salvation, which are the blessed Trinity, the incarnation, the uh, uh, the, the God is a creator and God is a rewarder of the good and the evil. So they will not be punished. Now, therefore, what do the modernists do? They said, well, since since no one's going to be punished for being invincibly ignorant. Therefore, if you are invincibly ignorant of the Catholic Church and you follow the natural religion, you're invincibly ignorant of the Catholic Church, you follow the precepts of the natural religion, and you know about one God, of course, and you know that God rewards the just, you know that he punishes the wicked, and you try to live a natural good life, then you will you will go to heaven. Ah! And so, therefore, you will not, you will not, God will not judge you for that sin, therefore, you will go to heaven. And that is error, and that is heresy. And this heresy spread throughout the church. And it was very important, because heresy laid the foundations for the good people following along with the heresies of Vatican II. The wicked ones don't care. But it was a heresy that laid the foundations for the good people following along with the errors and heresies of Vatican II. What does the Holy Mother Church teach? And what does sacred scripture teach? Those who do things in ignorance, and it is not their fault that they don't know, they shall not be punished for the thing they have done in ignorance. Let us go to another example. But they will not thereby be saved. And the American, the Catholic priests traveled to Canada in the early 20th century, around 1900, and they were visiting tribes living on, in, in Canada. And these tribes lived uh, in, in near lakes, and they every single winter they died of starvation. Every single winter, every winter the the snow would come. They were not able to chase the, the their their prey, and every winter they ran out of food, and they died of starvation. One third of the tribe would die every year. One of the missionary priests came by and says, "You realize you're dying of starvation because you don't have enough food to eat." But in fact, you're dying on top of ice. And if you drill a hole through the ice, you will find three feet below that the fish are still alive and that you can eat the fish and therefore you will live. Now what about those people who died? Now here's a rule. If you die within three feet of food and you do not take that food, you are committing suicide. However, these, these Indians did not want to die by, by starvation. It was not their choice to die by starvation. They didn't want to avoid food. They did not know. They were ignorant. They were invincibly ignorant of the fact that there is food three feet below them. And therefore, they died. So there is another point concerning invincible ignorance. The first thing concerning invincible ignorance. Invincible ignorance, whatever you do in invincible ignorance, you will not be punished for that which you have done. If you really believe, and truly believe, throughout your own fault, without your own fault, because very often ignorance is contrived, ignorance is crass, there are many kinds of, of wicked ignorances, ignorance is desired, and so there are many kinds of wicked ignorances, but the ignorance is through neglect, etc. However, if one is really invincibly ignorant, then he will not be punished. So therefore, when that Indian died, he will be told, that, okay, why are you so skinny? Why did you die of starvation when you there was food three feet away from you? You say, well, I didn't know. I had no way of knowing. I did not know the fish were still alive in the water. And therefore, he died of invincibly ignorant. However, he did not live. Now, what do the modernists say? Well, if you, if you didn't know that there was food there, then you're not, you're not going to starve. Now, here is the problem. Invincible ignorance takes away the guilt so that you will not be punished for the, anything you do in invincible ignorance. <laughs> invincible ignorance does not save. And what happened is that the heretics really promoted the Catholic priests. Invincible ignorance saves. Invincible ignorance saves. And therefore, a Catholic priest now is in a difficult position. Because now he talks to Hindus, he talks to atheists, he talks to people that are not Catholic. And like St. Francis Xavier did, like St. Thomas the Apostle did, like all our ancestors did, is, you know, these people, they may not become Catholic. And if I tell them about the Blessed Trinity, 
If I tell them what St. Thomas says are the three necessary truths for salvation, that if you have four necessary truths, if you don't believe these four necessary truths explicitly, you cannot go to heaven. And therefore, you must believe that God is a creator. Well, they know that. God is a rewarder. Everyone knows that. But how they cannot know the Blessed Trinity without divine revelation. They cannot know that God is Father, Son, Holy Ghost, unless God reveals it to them. And if I tell them that, they may not accept it. So why don't they just live good, natural lives, and then God will take them to heaven. They will go to heaven. And the fact is that souls will not go to heaven because they are ignorant. You cannot go to heaven because you're ignorant. If you cannot, you cannot, uh, you cannot have nutrition in your body because you're ignorant. One thing is to be ignorant; the other thing is to receive nutrition. And so, therefore, what does a missionary do? He goes around the world and says, "The whole world needs the Blessed Trinity. The whole world needs Christ." Supposing that you are traveling into the tribe and you see all these Indians lying dead on the ice, well, they don't know that there's food there, so of course it is they're not guilty because they're not guilty of suicide. They're just dying of starvation. I feel sorry. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell them that there's food right beneath the ice because if I do that, they're gonna feel bad. They're gonna think they were idiots. They're gonna think they, they should have known better, and they're gonna feel terrible. So I'm not gonna tell them about the food beneath the ice. I'm gonna pray for them that they live through the winter anyway, and I'm gonna go on to the next trial. Now the fact is, because not all died in the winter. There's always someone that lived. Now, the church would teach about such a man that whoever walked by that tribe and whoever saw all those Indians lying, dying upon the ice and knew that there was fish three feet below, those Indians would die and not be punished for their ignorance. But that man that walked by, who knew that they needed to see that they needed that fish, he will be punished very gravely for his not telling them and for his not warning them. And here we understand why Christ is so strict when he says, If you do not confess me before men, I will not confess you before the Father. If you don't publicly profess me before men, I will not profess you before the Father, and you will not make it into the kingdom of heaven. So in any case, of course, unless, of course, we repent. Anyone, no matter what wicked evil they deed they do, including if they're in ignorance by their own fault, no matter what ignorant evil thing they do, if they repent and go to God, they are forgiven. But most souls do not repent. And whoever dies unrepentant, not telling the other the sign close to heaven, is very guilty. That is why what Catholics must understand. If you travel through life and you do not try to bring others to Christ, and you do not speak to others about Christ, you must be damned. Because what is it that's necessary for salvation? Are, are, are it necessary for salvation that we believe in the blessed trinity and no man can know this by natural reason we all know by natural reason that there is one God that's obvious we know that God will punish the wicked we know that he will reward the just we know he is good these are things everyone understands including those that call themselves atheists they all know this but no man can know without divine revelation without the inspiration of God, that Father and Son and Holy Ghost are three persons in one God, and that the second person of the Blessed Trinity became man and died for our sins, and we, if we are connected to him, we can go to heaven. So invincible ignorance does not save. And therefore, what is the duty of the Catholic? He must preach the truth and bring the faith. Now this error is very great, because what it did was, it made it possible for people to think of another means of salvation. Because there's the Catholic Church, those that belong to the Catholic Church, there's those that believe in Jesus Christ, and then there's those that don't know any better, that's fine. Leave them in their ignorance. Now why did God, what kind of man, what kind of creature are we? We human beings are called rational animals. What makes us different from the animals? The other animals. We are animals because we have bodies. We have feelings. We have flesh. Therefore, we are animals. But what makes us different from the other animals is that we are rational animals. That is, we have a reason and a free will. That what makes us different. So anyone who, who, who does not help another person understand the truth commits the most serious sin you can commit against your neighbor. 
We're not talking about a sin against God here, but a sin against the neighbor. What's the most serious sin you can commit against your neighbor? To make sure that your neighbor doesn't know the truth. To make, to not let your neighbor know the truth, what is necessary for his life. Hence, and then now we understand why our ancestors in the first 300 years of our church were being put to death and being put to death and being put to death and being Catholic. And yet, what were they doing during those same 300 years? They saw that the Romans are going to hell. And they saw that the pagans are going to hell. And they saw that the pagans needed life. And the only way they can get life is by embracing the supernatural truth. Not the natural truth. Natural truth doesn't get you to a cloud. Right now, there are many people, in the, in, there are many human beings that are traveling at 30,000 feet. They are not traveling 30,000 feet because they went to Michael Jordan's school of how to jump high. They are traveling at 30,000 feet because they got into airplanes. And because they are flying by the means of an airplane at 30,000 feet. Now, man was meant to fly in heaven. Man was meant to fly to God. And it is easy for man to fly to God. All you got to do is book a flight and get on the plane. However, it cannot do it without booking a flight. You can't do it without getting on a plane. And so there, there's no other way to heaven than to get on the airplane or to get into the boat that is the Holy Roman Catholic Church. And therefore, the most urgent matter of anyone who has a true faith, who is really a rational animal, because there are two definitions of our human nature. As a man, I am a rational animal. I have reason. I am also called a political animal. That is, I'm an animal of society. I'm meant to be with others. So anyone who does not tell the truth about Jesus Christ to his neighbor is being inhuman. And anyone who does not strive to bring others into the true faith, to bring the supernatural faith, is not being human. He's going against his rational nature. He's going against his political nature. And God took our rational nature and he lifted it to the supernatural. When did he do that? On the day he created Adam. He created Adam on the earth, natural. He then placed him in the garden of paradise, which is supernatural. He gave him the infused virtues. He gave him infused knowledge. And he commanded him to increase and multiply and people of the earth with supernatural men. Not with natural men. Original sin came in and ripped things apart. And God still did not change his command. We need supernatural men or children who are going to be populating the kingdom of heaven when they die. Hence, the false doctrine about invincible ignorance is very grave. Now, what does St. Thomas tell us about this truth? When a person dies, God gives grace to every human being on earth in order to be able to save their souls. Now, the little babies who do not yet have the use of reason. Why does a church teach little babies that die without the use of reason, only those who never use their reason, and, and die, babies that die in the womb, they do not go to heaven. Now, is it their fault that they don't know about the Blessed Trinity and have accepted the Blessed Trinity, that they haven't been baptized and so on? No, it is not their fault. But what has happened? They don't know about the supernatural things. Therefore, when they die, they do not go to heaven. Because more than the natural is required to go to heaven. And furthermore, they were conceived with original sin. So what does God do with them? He places them in a place called limbo. And limbo is a place of happiness. It's a place of natural happiness. Where they do see God on the outside. And they are filled with as much happiness as can be naturally filled with. And they see the saints in heaven. They can talk to the saints in heaven. Like, for instance, those mothers who have babies who died in the womb, they will be able to talk to their babies. They will be able to communicate with their babies. Their babies will be perfectly happy. But these babies will not be in the kingdom of heaven. They will not be able to rise to the supernatural life. Now, it's a dogma of our church that all Catholics recognize that there is a place called limbo for the children. Now, why is it that there's limbo for the children? But there is no limbo for adults. There is no limbo for those that have reached the age of reason. Because once you reach the age of reason, you make a choice. And the choice is either I accept God, I accept His supernatural grace, or I reject God, and I reject His supernatural grace. Now what happens if you rejected God? If you reject God or are in the state of mortal sin, then you have to be repentant. There's only one way to repent. Jesus Christ's blood must flow across you. Our Lord Jesus Christ's redemption must save you. 
And he does not save you by natural means, but by dying on a cross in obedience to his Father. You must enter the supernatural life. Now, when we recognize this truth, this creates a fire inside of the Holy Roman Catholic Church. It creates a fire inside of the Apostle. It creates a fire inside of the Catholic. That there is, we are driven by the need to remove ignorance from the world. Not the ignorance about electricity. Not the ignorance about modern transportation. And the ignorance about how to use the internet. But the ignorance about what's necessary for life. What is necessary for life. What is necessary for life is to know, love, and serve God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The Blessed Trinity is not for the elite. It's not for the initiated. It's not for those people that got advanced in supernatural training. The Blessed Trinity is necessary to believe in for any man to arrive at the kingdom of heaven. Now what about the baby? What do we do with the baby? Well, the baby, he does not yet have the use of reason. We tell the parents, quam primum, says in Latin, as soon as possible. There can be multiple things to delay a baptism, but as soon as possible, you bring a child to the priest to be baptized. Because the baby, if he dies without baptism, though he will be happy forever in, in a natural lower happiness of limbo, he will not attain heaven. He cannot go to heaven. Therefore, what do we do? We take, you say, you take that baby and you bring him to the church quam primum as soon as possible so the priest can baptize the baby. And what happens? The sponsors, in the name of the baby, they say, I believe. And the, and the child believes. He's a rational animal. Then the, the, and then, what does he believe in? All the teachings of our Holy Mother, the Church. What's the most important one? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. For in this teaching is found all truth. And therefore, what does the priest do? He takes water. He pours it on the head of the baby. And he says, I baptize thee in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. And the Blessed Trinity enters the child. And that there all four truths are entered into the child. Though the baby dies after the baptism, the baby goes straight to heaven. If the baby dies before the baptism, the baby goes to limbo, where the baby will be naturally happy, but not supernaturally happy. And the baby will have no pain for all eternity. The baby will not be punished in any way, because the baby died without any error on its own. Therefore, there will be no punishment for the baby, but the baby will not see God face to face. Now what about the baby once he reaches the age of reason? Now he has committed mortal sins. Now he has turned against God. And, 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 and also it says in the scripture, who has not sinned? The most innocent man in the world. Look at the, the holiest of the Catholics. There are very few saints. Even amongst the saints, there are very few saints that never sin. There are multiple saints who did not commit mortal sins in their lives. That there, but there are very few good saints that have never sinned. Many saints had to repent at some point in their lives. Now, how is the only way to remove sin? Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace comes from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And this is also why our ancestors, for the last 2,000 years, the first thing to teach a baby is how to, how to say this, make the sign of the cross. For in the sign of the cross are all necessary truths in order to go to heaven. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, we make the sign that is the shape of the cross. And that tells us about the second truth, the third truth, which is redemption. Or let's put it in a hierarchy. The second truth, which is redemption. And then the Father, Son, Holy Ghost tells us about the first truth, which is God is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And then that God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that God, who is the second person of God, who became man, he shall judge the living and the dead. He shall be the remunerator, the rewarder of the, of the, of the just with heaven, the rewarder of the wicked with hell. And God created all things. And when we make the sign of the cross, those four truths are contained. So what does our Holy Mother Church teach? And St. Thomas to teach? What about those people who die without the physical knowledge of a missionary, who die in, 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 in foreign lands without the missionary? And St. Thomas teaches this. Because they have committed mortal sins, they must receive supernatural redemption. And St. Bonaventure tells us you cannot make a supernatural act unless you believe in something supernatural. So if I stand here and I tell you, I can prove to you that I'm a miracle worker because I can stand on this rug without falling down. You should believe in me. 
I forgot to mention the rug is on top of concrete. It's on top of the floor. There's nothing supernatural about that at all. However, if I can show to you that I can fly in the air on this rug, then that's supernatural. Now, if we're going to believe in the supernatural God, and the supernatural truth, we have to supernatural faith, there must be something supernatural to believe in. Or else it's not supernatural. Well, what is the supernatural truth, the most important supernatural truth, that we cannot know by our own reason alone, which requires divine revelation to know? And that is, God said to me, I am one God, and I am in three persons, and the three are not one, and the one is not three, but we are three persons found in one God. The Father is God, and the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God, and we are not three gods, but one God. There is only one God, but there are three persons, and the Father is not the Son, and the Son is not the Father, and the Son and Father are not the Holy Ghost, and so on. But we are three distinct persons, real persons, found in only one God. When we believe this, why do I believe it? Because it was supernaturally revealed to me by God, and I accept the supernatural revelation, and therefore I can't go to heaven. But what about the pygmy in Africa? What about the Hindu? What about the atheist, etc., who has no knowledge of God? What does happen? St. Thomas Aquinas says, those who respond to grace, and only God knows who they are. Because the majority of souls we call good are actually not good. They appear good to us, but they are actually not good. We have many secrets to hide from our neighbors. But those that are really good, or even how we're most wicked, no matter how wicked a man is, if he is extremely wicked, or if he is good, doesn't matter. Until the moment of death, he has the grace given by God to repent. So a serial killer, a Hindu serial killer, a Hindu that was very good in his life, a Hindu that was mediocre and average, until the moment of death, God gives the grace to him to repent of his sins, and he cannot repent without a supernatural repentance. And therefore, if he does respond to grace, and very few do, as St. Francis Xavier said in a letter he wrote back to his superior, St. Ignatius, as he was preaching in India, he said, very few travel from India to paradise. Because their religion is so wicked, and they are filled and such tied up with the devils, and they are not letting go of these devils. Those who don't let go of the devils, they shall be damned. Therefore, he said, very few pass from India to paradise. And his goal was to make as many as possible pass from India to paradise. And therefore, he devoted his life to converting the Indians. Not only them, but others throughout the rest of Asia. He converted over one million to the Catholic faith, St. Francis Xavier, before he was 14 years old and died. And so... What is this God, that God will allow that an angel appears to the man that is dying, or the woman that is dying, or the child that is dying who has reached the age of reason? And it doesn't matter whether he's a good man or a wicked man. He may be the most wicked of all the Hindu kings. But if he repents of his sin and responds to grace, then the angel will appear to him and tell him that, got, that God is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And the angel will tell him about the Blessed Trinity. And the angel will also tell him about the, the uh, God, the Son, the second person, became man and died for his sins. And he must embrace that Son. And he must embrace the Father and the Holy Ghost. And when he does this, he enters into the Holy Roman Church. He receives sanctifying grace. He enters into the kingdom of heaven when he dies repentant. But he cannot die repentant he cannot die with a natural knowledge only. He must have a supernatural knowledge. Hence, there is some ignorance which we do not leave a man in. There are some things if you do not know, we leave it alone because it's not essential. But there are other things that we cannot ever leave alone. All men must know that God is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And that who does not believe in God one God, who is in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, he cannot attain the kingdom of heaven. The modern teaching about invincible ignorance is most gravely wrong. It is well described by a, a priest before Vatican II named Father Clifford Fenton in his book uh, that No Salvation Outside of the Catholic Church, where he points out how the modern theologians have twisted the doctrine, and they have decided to say that we don't need to have a supernatural knowledge in order to go to heaven. And they twisted the doctrine of Pius XII, they twisted the doctrine of Pius IX, and they did not say correctly what Pius IX taught. 
which is those who labor in invincible ignorance shall not be punished and shall not be damned because of their invincible ignorance, but they shall be damned because of their other sins. In order for them to be saved, the only way they can be saved is by repenting of their sins. And they can only repent of their sins by accepting the source of repentance. There's only one source of repentance, and that's Jesus Christ's blood upon the cross. They can't repent of their sins unless they accept the source of that repentance, which is Jesus Christ upon the cross. That's God the Son who became man. Therefore, the minimum necessary knowledge in order to go to the kingdom of heaven for those that have reached the age of reason equals four truths. One, God created us out of nothing. Everyone knows, including the atheists. Two, God rewards us. The just he rewards with heaven. The unjust he rewards with hell. And God is a just God. He will not give the unjust heaven, nor will he ever give the just hell. And then thirdly, that he, is, he has become man to save our sins in his infinite goodness. And, he is, and it is not God who became man, but God the Son that became man. And therefore, we, if we say God became man, that's a heresy. No, God the Son became man. The second person of Blessed Trinity became man, not the first and not the third. And the second person of Blessed Trinity came by the command of the Father. He sent to us the Holy Ghost, but he became man. And therefore, it is most urgent that we let the world know that there is only one doctrine by which we can be saved. There is only one name by which man can be saved, and that is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the doctrine of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we human beings are secondly men of action, but we are firstly men of reason. We are rational beings, and no man is a man who does not use his reason. And, and therefore, the first duty of a man is to know the truth. And secondly, man is political. He is also a man of action. But his politics are in order to do good to his neighbor. Therefore, no man is man who does not believe the truth. And no man is man who does not love his neighbor. Hence, St. Paul says in Romans chapter 1, in the last verses, Because the Gentiles turned away from the true God, because they turned away from the truth and rejected it, they turned to homosexuality. And St. Saint, and Saint Paul tells us, what is the cause of a homosexual culture? What is the cause of a perverted culture? And he says, it's because they deliberately turned away from God. Now why is it that St. Paul says, those who turn away from God in their minds, those who turn away from God in their hearts, will become perverted in the most perverse manner, will go against the very nature of man. Homosexuality is a most great perversion because what does it do? It kills the human race. It destroys humanity. It destroys the health of the individual. It destroys the life of the society. It destroys everything human. It is the most way destructive thing to do to a human being in his nature. What does St. Paul say? Turn away from God with your reason. Turn away from God deliberately, and you will become homosexual. Now, this is what St. Paul said in Romans chapter 1. Around verse 25, towards the end of that chapter. And so what is it that, now, why does he say that? A rational animal, a man is a man of reason. He uses his reason. His reason is to know the truth. And the supreme truth is the most important truth to know. Therefore, we tell a little child, who made you? God made me. Why did God make you? He made me to know him, love him, and serve him in this world, so that I might be happy with him in the next, and to show forth his goodness. Who is God? You know, the child is so young. You'll confuse him if you say that there are three persons and only one God. So why don't you just tell him there's only one God. Then when he turns 18, you can tell him that there's more than one person. Then when he gets to college, you can tell him there's actually three persons. And then you can tell, explain later, like the Masons do. Always tell the first part of truth and lie about the rest. But we don't do that. We tell the whole truth when you're seven years old. We don't tell the half-truth. Because the whole truth is necessary to save. A boat has to have zero holes in it. The whole entire hull must be correct. And then the boat doesn't sink. And then the boat safely floats. So we recognize what is the whole of our faith? What is the whole of the Catholic Church? What is that whole made out of? It is not made out of sacraments. It is not made out of the hierarchy of the church, pope, bishops, and priests. It is made out of faith. So if you have the structure of the church is made out of the hierarchy. 
And the whole of the church is made out of faith. And if the faith is taken from us, then we shall sink. And the faith must be on the outside and the inside, which is why God told Noah, you will pitch this boat on the outside and you will pitch it on the inside. You will save it from leaks on the outside and you're going to save them leaks on the inside. Imagine what the boat builders were talking to Noah about. You are, you, are, you are protecting the boat on the inside so it doesn't leak on the inside. Where is the water going to go? What is somebody going to do? Spill their cup, spill their glass of water, and the boat's going to sink? You're insane. But this church, because it's faith that is our hull, it can sink because of heresies on the outside. That is, the lies of the world come into the church. But it can also sink because of heresies on the inside. That is, the lies of those within the Holy Church, punching holes inside of that boat. Therefore, Noah was instructed, protect the faith on the outside against the errors of the heretics and the pagans. And take the pitch and put it on the outside. And take the pitch and seal it from the inside against the errors and the errors and errors of Catholics, particularly like the modern Gnostics. Modernists are simply modern Gnostics, trying to have some kind of secret knowledge and take the truth of faith and twist it, twist it, twist it. And St. Thomas Aquinas says, beware of the modernists. Well, they take the truth and they twist it. The truth about invincible ignorance is, whoever dies in a state of invincible ignorance, or does anything when they're alive in the state of invincible ignorance, will never be punished by God for anything they did because of ignorance. However, they will not be saved because of ignorance. And this is the great lie. You are taught, if you are ignorant, it will save. And this is not just a teaching of the modernists. It is a teaching of the world for 6,000 years. The old saying, ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is not bliss. Now ask those Indians that died on top of that ice. Was ignorance bliss? No, it was not. They didn't want to die a terrible death of starvation. Ignorance was not bliss at all for them. And if they only knew about that, those, those fish beneath the, beneath the ice, they would be very happy. But they didn't know. And because they didn't know, they starved. And many souls are going to be damned. Also, as Our Lady of Quito says, there will be many souls in the 20th century, and now in the 21st century, who will be damned simply because no one told them the truth. Simply because no one led them. Even though they were living in sin. Even though they were living wicked lives. And they were guilty. If they were told the truth, they would have repented. But they were never told the truth. There are many souls that are most wicked, but when they learn the truth, they'll turn back to God. There are other souls who are really nice, who are very good, but if you tell them the truth, they will turn to viciousness. And God only knows which soul is which. He knows well. And those souls that are genuinely ready to repent, He will make sure they are given the grace in order to be saved. It only takes one moment to believe in the truth, and one moment to make an act of supernatural perfect charity. One moment to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And until the last moment of life, God gives the grace for us to be saved. But no one is saved by ignorance. Ignorance is a benefit to no one. And therefore, we cannot say, I don't need to know. We do need to know. And it is the duty of the missionary and the duty of the Catholic to go around the world and tell souls, it is necessary for your happiness, necessary for your salvation, it is to believe that there is only one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That God the Son became man. He died on the cross for our sins. He established His church, which is called His mystical body, the Holy Roman Catholic Church. He gave to us His sacraments. He gave to us the hierarchy of the church. He gave to us sacramentals. He gave to us vestments. He gave to us holy sacrifice of the Mass. He gave to us an infinite store of graces. He gave to us the saints. He gave to us the angels, and even guardian angels to take care of us. He gave to us all the food that we eat. He gave to us all the things that are in the sky. He gave to us everything in our bodies. He gave to us all our organs. He gave us every single atom and molecule. He gave us everything, including the 280 trillion viruses that are in your body right now. He gave you every one of them. The only one he didn't give you was a coronavirus. <laughs> but the fact is, he has given every single one of these things to us, and they are for our life and for our goodness and for our salvation. He has given us so many things. Therefore, know him, and love him, and serve him. And if you have not known him, if you have known him, but you have not loved him, if you have known him, but not loved him, and not served him, then be sorry for your lack of love and your lack of service. 
and know, love, and serve Him now, and do it with the fullness of your heart, with the fullness of your mind, and you shall be saved. But if not, tradition, eternal hell, awaits. We don't want that eternal hell for anyone, including the most wicked of our enemies, and we recognize that at one moment they can repent and accept the four necessary truths deeply in their hearts, make an act of perfect contrition, an act of perfect charity, and then God will give them the grace to enter into our holy church if they're not already in it, or to make the good confession by uh, the back and that perfect act of contrition if they're not able to go to confession, and they will go straight to the kingdom of heaven, or they have to stop for a brief time in purgatory if they are not yet completely perfect, and therefore God is the good God who wants to save us all, but he made us rational, he made us political, and he will not save us without our reason, he will not save us without our political nature. Lord, I bless you all. In the Father, and the Son, and the Ghost. Amen.